Hey guys, welcome to my fabulous world. It's another day, another opportunity to connect. And today I'm connecting with you in conversation with Mastole Landu. But before we get on, remember to subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. We want to grow this channel. We want by the end of the year to be at 100,000 subscribers. At the moment, we are just over 10,000. So keep telling people to subscribe. And this is the place to grow, to learn, to get to know more, especially uh, if you're a young person or you're anyone from 45 or between 18 and 45, this is a place for you. I'm talking to Maskole Mlandi today. Maskole, yeah. good to see you. It's good to see you. Thank you for making the time. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, it's such a pleasure to break bread. I know, I know. Right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, of course, uh, uh, can you tell our, our viewers where you come from. I mean, you are Maskole Mlandu and anyone who's in Cape Town who's been at UCT would know you, but many people might not know who you are and um, mm. yeah. So can you tell us uh, who you are, where, where do you come from? Um, and your claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about my claim to fame. Okay, but I'll, tell, I'll tell it after you say it. Yeah, but um, Maskole is the last born from my mother's side. Nursing this to Sylvia Mlandu and um, born and bred here in Cape Town. Um, I always say in my, I've, I know everything about Cape Town, everything I uh, got to know about my life, I got it here in Cape Town. Mm. My first kiss, my <laughs> <laughs> first uh, experience of going to school, my yeah. first fight, you know, my moments of sadness, yeah. you know, they're all born out of Cape Town. But of course, um, I am a student in the University of Cape Town, an activist, uh, someone who's interested in black people. I think that's my rise to fame, that I loved black people so much to a point where I begin to see myself in speaking more to their issues and to their concern. And yeah, that's how I rose to fame. Good. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought you would tell this, you know, when I came to UCT, of course I knew you before I mm. came to UCT, but I remember in 2016, when I came to UCT, I got here in July, and I talked to one student mm. uh, uh, who came from Kalkeni, and he said, oh, Prof, it's the, it's, this is my final year, uh, mm. I don't want to be anywhere where my story is speaking, <laughs> because as long as my story is speaking, I want to do whatever he says. <laughs> Oh, because man. and he said she said i don't know what it is mm. but whatever she says i just feel that we must all go i've gone to everything that my scholar said we must go as student so but of course you don't know the your effect mm. on other people when you speak mm. and how you you talk to what they're thinking or you articulate that which they want to articulate and they they didn't know how to articulate it so so I, I would say that's a that's a gift, a blessing, mm -hmm. and and that's contributed to your rise to fame. Okay. So you are an activist, student mm -hmm. activist, and that's why I called you here. Mm -hmm. And you were involved in the Roads Must Fall, Shakeville, uh, Fees Must, must Fall. fall. Mm -hmm. um, of course, people in Hope, they might not know what Shakeville is, and mm -hmm. I want us to talk a little bit about it yes. as we go along. But but you were involved in in that, and and I mean you know. You were young, just a young group of uh, group of young people who m many of who led that mm. are those who grew up in Cape Town and those who were in you know equal education when it started. Mm. Um, tell us about those years when you started with um, when you were part of uh, uh, Roads Muscle mm. and Shakeville and yeah. No, thank you for that question. I mean, uh, as a disclaimer, my. I'm here to write a book, in fact, because many of our colleagues have written um, quite a number of work. Uh, I know Kusi Chikane has gone into the Rainbow book, um, which he gave me a copy when it, when it came out. Um, I know Usizwe Washimbof uh, also has a, a book where he reflects a bit about the student protest and, and what happened in, 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 in Rhodes, or in Oxford. Um, but a number, quite a number of people have said about 
the face must fall, um, the roads must fall, but none of those kind of contribution have come from the people who are there. Yes. So um, I think in the future it would be something interesting to explore. Mm. But for me, I I always understood um, that the roads must fall movement as something that is born out of things that were happening in the country and outside of the country. And mm. if I can chalk a little bit, you will remember that um, not so long ago there was an Arab Spring happening across the, the continent where it took one person in Tunisia mm. to bend themselves down out of protest over the economy, the frustration of um, educated people who are not employed, the slow pace of change in other um, con uh, countries in the continent. And of course that sort of spread mm. through Egypt uh, and a number of Arabic countries. For us, we were chilling at home in Kailich at that mm -hmm. time, fascinated by, you know, political protests, fascinated by changes on how to influence people to do certain things. Mm -hmm. We saw it as an away moment that mm -hmm. every young person is, you know, trying to articulate a sense of agency, mm -hmm. that things need to change within the continent. And of course, here at home, as early as 2013, um, we experienced, in 2012, we experienced the Maritana mm -hmm. massacre, which was preceded by Ingrid Stadal, who mm -hmm. was killed in the um, uh, protest delivery mm -hmm. uh, march. All of these things could anger people, but could not really wield into action. So, um, we saw 34 people die, mm -hmm. but we're not, we're not moved like, yeah. in ways in which in Tunisia, where people were moved. Mm. We were not on the streets. Of course, uh, the EFF was born out of that catalytic moment. Mm. Um, so here I am in first year in 2013, telling myself I'm not going to participate in university. Those are also come with these ideas that uh, maybe it's my time to make a difference in my life. Mm. Um, maybe be a good student so that uh, I can make my mother proud. But because of the nature of the environment of the university, um, one could not just be educated and stay quiet about the environment in which they are educated in. Mm. So um, the movement just came in natural mm. as a, a way of understanding your being in the university, how you relate um, to other kids who are in uh, your, your city, the dining hall, how you are needed to lectures, how do you relate to the content, how do you relate to the images, how do you relate to the feeling, there was this feeling of excitement, mm. you know, but you are excited in a place where you should dislocate it. Mm. So you don't know where to place this excitement on, you know, yeah. you're happy that you're here, mm. you know, and you're, you're standing towards the but you don't see yourself in this thing. So then for me, it was easy to participate in those kind of feelings, because it answered something that I was unable to answer. Mm. Um, so back in 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 in, in, 20, 2020, in, in 2014, mm. uh, we started um, a talking space. Okay. Um, and part of the talking space, we realized that um, not everyone, you know, you sit here as this white culture of thinking that um, every student is going to participate in orientation. Mm -hmm. You know. Not everyone participates yes. in orientation, not because they don't want to see the city. Even those who live within Cape Town, have grown up in Cape Town, don't know Cape Town. Mm. So, um, and we've always had this idea that to make it around Cape Town, one has to be a bit resourceful, in a mm. sense, you know. So one is, was a bit shy, stay in their room, even though we have been called for activities that are free, mm. sometimes you afraid to mingle with other people because there's that conversation, where did you go to school? Yes. You know? and no, you we went to, yeah, yeah, I went to uh, uh, High. Mm. And Spamata who? Spamata what? <laughs> <laughs> so you would have those kind of conversation. Yeah. Um, so we started feeling like, okay, then, then there's a need to create a, a space for those who... At that time, there were fewer black students. Mm, yes, okay. yes, in terms of numbers. numbers. Uh, but of course, uh, the university at that time was still implementing the uh, race as a proxy, okay. um, the policy. Okay. 
which uh, was coming under fire um, by some uh, members, if I may. I mean, who's that's the professor? Jeremy Sikings mm -hmm. was also at the forefront of coming under fire and attacking the police as a, as a very mm -hmm. proxy. Thing. So, the point being all that we were a group of small kids who felt like we don't belong in the university, mm -hmm. but yet we were excited that we are in university mm -hmm. and we needed to talk. Mm -hmm. you know, we need to remember who mm -hmm. the food was quite uh, you know strange and surprising mm -hmm. you know it was a surprise that we could eat cumin's a day and some side things like yeah during the week during the week oh, Mara, yeah. was happening it was a christmas every things day. that we eat at christmas oh, yeah. i don't want to tell you about <laughs> to a point where there was a joke um, mm -hmm. within six months your students used to put a picture of you when you first arrived and, and six months later, and, six and put Oromat in between. Oh, know? yeah! <laughs> so, you yes. see what Daniel yeah. Oromat has done to you. <laughs> so, the point yeah. being, um, many of us felt suffocated about the fact that you are eating two meals a day and you know what, that what's happening at home, yeah. and the fact that you are in this comfort and you don't know what happened with your siblings. Yeah. Mm. So, we felt like we needed to sit down and talk. Mm. So we created a space called Imbizo, thanks to the wardens at that time. Mm. Mr. Mulen, I think, is still a warden in, 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 in Makwat, mm. where he gave us our first budget to mm. open up the space. Okay. And the first budget was, you can have close to five to six thousand. Mm. And we asked the workers to, to pay a tribe, who you know, show, mm. you know, things that will mm. sort of make people remember. Mm. Things that will really make them remember who. And so you wouldn't go to the dining hall, you would meet. We, we used to go to the dining hall, but this was in our events, oh, okay. you know, okay. so that. And we used the workers mm. uh, to cook for us so that we can generate mm. income. And that's how we got to be close to the workers. Okay. It, is what, it was on those conversations, mm. you know, when we first interrogated what it means be black at UCT, mm. what it means to be a student. Mm. And people came out and started talking about their own issues. But, but what, was that kind of um, inspired by your enlightenment in involvement before you came to UCT? Or is it is it something normal that any student would? No, not really. Mm. It's not something normal. I, I was heavily active in, 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 in my vocation. Mm. Back, back in high school, okay. back in, in Kailicha, in a number of, of organizations. I mm. first started, I was recruited by Treatment Action Campaign. Uh -huh. uh, those who are young, I guess, you know, Treatment Action yes. Campaign is um, the organization uh, that fought for ARVs to be enrolled mm. in, in, in South Africa mm. and continues to fight for a, a well addressed systematic uh, response to the health problems mm. facing particularly. Africans and those who are poor. Mm. At that time, TAC had just won a big victory mm. over dealing with stigma and denialism mm. by the former uh, President Tabon Big. Mm. And at that time, we were in the community facing issues around stigma. People mm. didn't want to come out uh, on, on, on revealing their status, people didn't want to talk. Mm. So the idea of talking mm -hmm. for me was not a new concept. Okay. It okay. came from yes. hosting those group sessions yes. where I used to listen to people talk about how they're afraid to tell their loved ones mm -hmm. that they are, you know, HIV positive. Because at that time, AIDS is associated with sex. Sex mm -hmm. is a sort of shame, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. why I'm sleeping around yes. with dating men or dating yes. women. So people do not, could not come out. Mm -hmm. So when we had to unpack those things to people, mm -hmm. when we had to talk about that, it's not your fault, you're mm -hmm. not should not be shameful yes. about who you have engaged with in sexual intercourse. Mm. That didn't protect you in that way to use a condom. Mm. You know? And so I found talking as a very healing um, mm. uh, thing, even not from a position of healing, but as a, as a position of learning. Yes, you know? yes. Um, we grew up in, in African families where we were told, don't listen to your elders talk. <laughs> go, to <the laughs> go, to yeah, yeah. go outside. Go outside. So I knew, okay, at some point there are things that they're going to talk that they don't want yeah. to. So talking is in a way a position of, of learning. So I learned those things from TAC. Okay. 
Then after TSC, I joined uh, Equal Education. Okay. Um, at that time, uh, Doreen Isaacs and uh, was this the former, um, uh, she was a member of Kansas Yolanda Sioni. She just died in a foot, you know, so oh, yeah. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. She was a member of Kansas at UCT oh. with a number of corporates um, who were quite active in the educational problems. Equal education started after TSC. Yeah. In the same year. No, mm -hmm. TSC is a, it's a, it's an old baby. It's yeah. around the nineties. Okay. Yeah, when oh, who's Zaki that? Ahmad. Zaki Ahmad. Um, who who's that? Uh, our activist who was living proudly with HIV, but also uh, was a queer. Oh, oh, yes. I forgot them. I the name yeah, was, there was a number was, of uh, activists who, who came out at mm, that time. Mm. Uh, so TSC emerges yes, out yes. of that period, and Zaki goes to India to get uh, cheap appeals to mm. force the government to show that it's possible to get, you know, but we don't want to enter into big into pharmaceutical businesses. But what is important about TSC is that it first showed us the possibility of mitigating government yes. for a possible yes. chance, yes. you know, yes. and from all that, yeah. the style of going yeah. into courts for yeah. forcing government to hold up to mm. constitutional mandates was, mm. was a thing, yeah. and gave space to so many of us to mobilize ourselves in, in the community. Mm. Then it was the call education, call education, the first uh, campaign was broken windows. Okay. Um, in, in Lufthansa, there were, were the problem of almost all the major windows were broken. So people, students could not go and study in that class because it's cold. Yes. You know, in winter, it's, it's freezing. Yes, don't go to school. Yeah, people don't go to school. So the campaign was to encourage the, the state, particularly the Department of uh, Education, mm. to refix those uh, infrastructure. And there's a huge neglect in, in, our, in, our, in terms of the schools in our township. So, and then from that we went to um, early when we encouraged kids to come in early there was an issue of late attendance i don't know if you know this that uh, most of kids don't spend their school their first hours at school in the first class because they are walking to school yeah they are walking to school and they arrive late, late. others they have to take they have to wake up at six they have to take uh, their, their, their siblings first to school they have to do all those kinds of runs before they actually, so they eventually arrive late. Yeah. The first few classes they miss. they miss because detention or outside, mm -hmm. or others decide, oh, I'm late either way, let me go, let me, let me not go to school. Mm -hmm. So they end up dropping school. So we wanted to encourage people to mm -hmm. come early in school, mm -hmm. see how, how we can help with their chores if mm -hmm. we have many chores. Mm -hmm. And you find that you know people do did come in and assist because you will be going to Sismisen and I'm going to Spamanja and they are in opposite direction and my niece is going to a similar closer school so can you please go with my niece so that I can make it home and then eventually went to minimum norms and standard of infrastructure all kinds of campaigns so the, your activism started there yes yes before it even I came I came in. In 2013, already I had uh, chaired, uh, uh, I had two terms in, in my branch of being oh, chairperson. Of and equal education? Of TAC. Okay. And equal education, we were the first ones to mobilize a cell in, in, mm -hmm. in Spaman okay. and became a home of equal education also. Okay. So you come into UCT, you already have experience mm -hmm. as a young leader, young activist. Mm -hmm. You, you've led as well, but you're also exposed to the issues, societal issues, mm. issues that young people are struggling with. Yes. Were you also, uh, were there also times uh, when you would read, you know, either mm. the political theory yeah, in, yeah. in TAC or equal education? Yes. Or workshops or what? Yeah, TAC used to be big on workshops, uh, mm. very big on workshops. I think they are more than of, uh, educating the downcrowded and the poor working class is quite effective in terms of explaining big concepts which are dealt with medicine you know mm -hmm. 
certain pills I'm on Navarapin, I'm on AZT. You knew them? I, we knew them by heart. We was able to go and explain, explain. to someone who was taking it's these pills. Yeah. Yeah. And then at that, that know, time it wasn't one tablet. Yeah, it was main. main. You know, yeah. I mean, of course, part of our, our biggest fight mm -hmm. that we, had, we used to have at that time is South Africa is late in this idea mm -hmm. of development of, 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 of treatment of HIV mm. to a point where the pills that we get, you know, if you are if you are if you are HIV positive, depending on the city for count mm. and what the doctor can tell you, whether you are fit to eat their face, there is first line regimen, there's second line regimen, there's third line regimen. Mm. First line regimen, depending on the, what, what the city of count looks like, it's a number of pills. Mm. You know? it's, it's a lot of it to a point where you get Tired. Yes. And second, if those pills don't work in your immune system, you go to a second line regimen. And if the mm. second line regimen does not work in your immune system, you go to a third line regimen. Mm. In other countries, they're almost on the 15 line regimen. Yes. You know. So, meaning that there, there, there are certain pills that could work better for mm. you know other human beings that are not being distributed because of the unequal distribution of, um, of, of patent laws and who gets to reproduce the pill. And how they get to reproduce the pill. And I remember back in the day, we were fighting for a pill uh, that will replace Navarapin or something. Mm. It has almost all in combination the first level regimen oh. pill in one pill. Yes. But you cannot get that pill because India has no patent laws over that pill. So TAC entered into the struggle of patent laws. And mm. So, short of it all, is that. Um, we used to read a lot around what's happening in health, okay. you know, okay. and workshops where, you know, when you get when you get a reading, every big word is sort of explained, okay. you know, on the side, mm. like a typical school thing mm. where we move from <laughs> the assumption that not everyone knows, but mm. at the same time, not everyone is ignorant. Mm. We're all willing to learn, mm. and we come from different versions of, of life. But I think my uh, interest in books came in when I first met Utatu Theo Mabusel and Antu mm -hmm. and um, and Afriku Mambani. These were former teachers. Okay. Yeah. Antu Tumu may so rest in peace. Um, he was a teacher for almost 10 years before mm -hmm. I bumped into him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Frustrated. And you were still at high school? Right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Still in high school. He was. Frustrated by the educational system that does not, he used to say, does not create a human being that is socially active to change their situation. That was mm. his frustration. Is that, and this is the first man to give me Paul Frank pedagogy of the oppressed. Uh -huh. And I'm in high school. Wow, you read pedagogy of the oh, oppressed. Paul Frank, it was our daily bread oh. in, 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 in back in high school. Mm. And then Tabitio Mabusela was a former liberation icon mm. in South Africa, who South Africa has not honored even up until today. And I mean, I can count the number of activities. He yeah, he was with the PAC. He was the chairperson of the PAC in then and two in and three, leading up to the transition. Mm. And just you know, a few historical moments where he was actively involved. Mm. Saint James Massacre. Mm -hmm. um, in Kenilworth, that mm -hmm. um, was the chairperson of the PAC. Abu Abu Makoma, they were receiving in, you know political instructions from him. Mm -hmm. But post 1994, the PAC goes to you know a dilemma whether should we go to elections, should we not go to elections, and of course it was one of the people who didn't agree mm -hmm. that the party should go into election. So he was stripped of all of his things, mm -hmm. you know. He used to be a high manager at Woolworths at some point, you know, and he was with us. He mm -hmm. taught us how to drink tea and mm -hmm. coffee when we talk politics. Mm -hmm. Oh man, Namzo, the father, the father could speak different languages, Zwana, Sutu, Tosa, and talk on different topics mm -hmm. from religion to science to the role of education. So you used to spend time with him mm -hmm. and he would Yes. Just, just speak. Wow. And he would just be amazed on what, what he says. I mean. mm. uh, someone who speaks English eloquently in that way, you know, in a township. Yeah. Like we were like taking a breath. Like I we used to say we never met so good before, but yeah. through that normal we've oh. seen a glimpse of what 
this discipline of the movement can do to a person. Mm. Uma Bana gave me my first, second book um, by Epi Tabat, Education for Barbarian. Okay. Quite classic at the time. But what interested me with all of these three people, Uncle Doom, you could never take a book out of his house. He had a room mm. full of books. So if you want to read it, you go you read there, it there. And you read it there, you'll see tomorrow. You see it. The trauma of thinking about what will come next of the uh -huh. chapter. But you can't take you it. Can't take it. <laughs> you want to rush in the morning, but you can't go. You can't because you have to go to school. <laughs> yes. You know? And it's also rude to wake up. You're the you first one up. You know, to, to, to wake yes. people up. And I was not raised in that day. My mother hates people who visit. Yes, yes, yes. Why people have not even watched that? <laughs> when you are busy, can you borrow me that book? <laughs> but it's a nice problem to have as yes, a high school kid. Yes, yes, that yes. you want to hear what the next yes, chapter yes, is. Yes. And you're doing that while studying. Yeah. And, but clearly you are doing well at school. Yeah, you know, interesting when I started getting interest in reading mm. social social science, political things, pictures of Somugwe. I lost interest in medicine physics. I was doing oh, medicine physics in, in, in high school. Mm. Yeah, I know. People won't believe it, but yeah, I know. I was doing those things of philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you, you left them in which grade? Yeah, grade I, left, 10. I, I left them in grade uh, when I was about to go to grade 12. Uh -huh. But I left meds, I didn't leave physics. Didn't physics. Okay. Um, because I mean, I was advised by in China, you're not. Uh, you're not, you're not shining in the same ways in which you could be exceptionally shining. Yes. And and I didn't do well. I took my gap year. Mm -hmm. So I finished my metric back in 2011. Mm -hmm. And doing physics and immensely. Then I got into a program which the qualification had, which was a community leadership program. Okay, you did that in 2012? Yeah. For the whole year? For the whole year. Uh -huh. For the whole year. There, we used to read intensely uh -huh. because each and every week we still have to produce a review of a book that we are reading uh -huh. now. And they would select a book for you? I would select a book. You select a book. They, they didn't say which, which yeah. area of study. No, 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 no. But I was quite closer with the director of the program, Uchi Nafura, okay. um, who used to exchange a lot of um, uh, SMSs on things that I've read in the book, if I see the quote, I'm quite to her. Mm -hmm. And I remember how I even met Chuman. It, it, oh, yes. it is through her who took me to the Center for Conflict Resolution mm -hmm. um, in Spin Street. Okay. And was Chuman not in equal education? No, he was in TAC. Oh, he was in TAC. Yeah. Okay. So I, I bumped into Chuman, we were doing a, a talk on safety, gangsterism mm -hmm. in the center. And the speaker, he was doing his tongue clams as usual. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so what happened was he, he did a comment around why these talks are being held in the CPD while the people who are actually affected are in the in township. Country. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And he didn't mention his name. So at the end, the speaker is like, so he said, what's your name? Yeah. Kumani stands up, nobody knows my name, so nobody cares. And I'm like, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> like so I'm what? sitting with Uchina. <laughs> Uchina, Uchi, do you know nobody cares? You know? Do you know? I don't know nobody cares. What do you mean? Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Do you know nobody cares? Nobody knows my name. Mm. It's James Baldwin's book. Oh. Yeah, well, uh, and <laughs> nobody knows my name, so it's, nobody it's cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. It's, it begins with those lines. Oh, you know. okay. Um, so in the morning, she sends me a quote of James Baldwin, then I end up going picking up James. That's how I even oh. learned about James Baldwin and all these things. So she used to have guide me in a sense of mm -hmm. what I should be interested in reading since I was interested in black people. Yes. And she was the first Africana uh, that I've met mm. who used to be open about, you know, white people's role in, in, in our oppression. So, yeah, I, I learned a lot from her. She used to, in fact, when she left the city, mm. she was at the university and the social department. Okay, she was teaching? Um, no. She was a student? Uh, she was not. She was just a post oh, okay. uh, administrative type of thing. Okay. She gave me all of her collection of books. 
you know, um, which I still hold dearly up to talk to. So mm-hmm. the culture of reading for me was also because I'm a, I'm a loud person. I don't mm-hmm. like not knowing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. you know, it yes. puts me off. Yes. Uh, so I used to read for the benefit of showing off yes. when I meet my friends. That's even cool. words, bombastic words. <laughs> You throw it in when it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Put it there and see how it moves. So yeah, okay. that's how I sort of moved quickly into reading okay. and writing okay. with those um, community. And I realized that it helped because after that, I was the one reading letters at home. You know, anything that used to come in, you know, I, I used to be excited about mm. that. And it helped me to deal with so much with my anger mm. and some of the issues that I thought I didn't have because you know as black mm-hmm. boys we think that we don't have issues we mourn to we cry mm-hmm. but when you grow up and you start realizing why you angry mm-hmm. and you realize you know man i've been angry for at the wrong people i used to be mm-hmm. angry at my mother why did she join me why did she go to exile <laughs> like everyone when everyone was going to what exile she doing? what was she doing you know? <laughs> i'm sure she couldn't find a nice little boy or something <laughs> But you know, yeah. she was my mother, yes. she was just living yes. her life. Yeah. And her but, but here's the thing, not that you say that, you know, I think what we don't realize is that actually activism um, is a luxury of the privileged. Mm. Where the poorest of the poor don't even have the energy. Mm. You know, yeah. they, have, they, have, they have big bigger battles. Most definitely. So, so they are not even thinking about that. Yeah. They, they, they are the struggle. Yeah. Uh, so, so I, I often feel like, yeah, I mean, there are many people who can say why, why are they not doing this or that, but they mm. can't. They've got yeah. bigger. Yeah, they, most definitely, most definitely. I mean, I myself used to be asked whenever I go home, mm. I tell me, why are you yeah. busy internalizing the university in this way? Don't you know we have things to take care of? Yes. Yeah. And my friend, um, Black Pascal, he used to, he used to call me a selfish boy. I was calling me a selfish. But what do you mean? Here you are, you know, you go through some of these things, you talk nicely, you know, you have a sense of awareness, but yet you want to subject us to this fighting for black people while you could just easily get a job, you know, mm-hmm. work in a corporate discipline yourself and take care of your mother in order to, you know, take care of other things. Mm-hmm. So it is, some other people see it as a luxury, Uh, just like studying social sciences, it was known to be an activity of white travelers Mm -hmm. who just want to learn Mm -hmm. about African anthropology and all of these things, but never really take it as a a career. Mm -hmm. Um, But for me, the other thing is, I am not into activism by my own choice. Mm -hmm. I think if I would have taken my own choice, I would have taken a different path. Mm-hmm. I, I was brought into it because of the circumstances. Mm-hmm. You know, there are there are moments where you it's either you, you, you are silent and life just fills you up with all of its troubles mm-hmm. or you find a niche to explain why certain things happen in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why are we poor? Why are we dying in our numbers? Mm-hmm. Why are we sick? Mm-hmm. Why we live in congested places? Why do we work in dehumanizing, humiliating jobs and services? Mm-hmm. Why are we ill-treated even when we have worked so hard and sleepless nights and proving ourselves that we can do better? Mm-hmm. Why is it, is, does it feel like people don't recognize our efforts? Mm-hmm. Even when they, you know, they have never asked for forgiveness and mm-hmm. anything, yet we are so peaceful and loving. Once you begin to I wanted to understand why all those things, and I felt so free. Yeah. I felt so free from failure. Mm-hmm. I felt so so free from ideas of success, mm-hmm. uh, ideas of progress, because I know <coughs> very well that for black people, we move from a position of failure to that of success. Mm-hmm. And even when you think you are at that moment of success, failure is here at your neck. Mm-hmm. That any wrong move, it can be resulting in a moment of failure. So, I did not to hold on to these things daily as if my life depends on it. Mm-hmm. You know, I just need to think of it as as they are. Mm-hmm. It can be given, it can be taken. 
if it's if I have it, what do I do in the meantime to make my impact? Mm -hmm. If I don't have it, all good and well. You could be in something today. Okay. Tomorrow you'll be in Alexander. Alexander. You know, mm -hmm. and you must not feel a sense of guilt or shame. Yes. You know, yes. because life for to be black is to constantly be in this in these contradictions in themselves. Yeah. yeah. So it liberated me mm -hmm. to understand that my problems are not God made. Mm -hmm. It's not. Alpha and Omega, who mm -hmm. said, I must be poor. These are deliberately stigmatized things that are made by certain people who I help bend in creating a life at the expense of others. Mm -hmm. And if I understand that, it's easy to better navigate my surroundings, my people. But let's, I mean, most of the student activism, of course, it's not about you, it's about the bigger questions mm. that affect students and affect the society. You get into your embark on roads must fall. Mm. Roads falls, the statue falls. Mm. Uh, and then what? Mm. I mean and this is one of my critique about um, all my disappointment about student activism now. Mm. It's it's fixed on local issues of the university. Mm fees, frustration, mm. which of course are historical. They're you know, important. They're important, but, you know. Mm. But they're not, they're not the priority, they're not the sine qua, they're not, without it, things will not be it. Mm. Life still moves, mm. you know, and they are influenced by other things. Uh, I felt that there's no really a discourse mm. in universities that brings us back to why are we in university? Mm. You know? For others, you know, people will say, I'm here in university to get a job. Mm -hmm. you know, other people say, I'm here to, to get an education. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, the university is a space to ex explore ideas, mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. think about yourself differently mm -hmm. from yeah. what you used to understand yourself. Mm -hmm. And to think about yourself differently gives you that edge mm -hmm. or a sense of agency to want to change things. Mm -hmm. Biko says it beautifully. One cannot be conscious unless they are and still be bound in the same conditions in which they are conscious about. Mm -hmm. Consciousness has to necessitate a sense of change. Mm -hmm. you know? So for, 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 for me, the roads must fall and fields must fall where, where the creation of a consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. not the end of it all. Yeah. Yeah. It was a base to say university life are not a conveying belt just to the market. Mm -hmm. But it was also to say those who are here at the city, at, I don't know about other universities, um, but some, there's something interesting about Vets, Rhodes, the city, Stellenbosch, mm. and the fact that the students see themselves as the next captains of industry. Mm -hmm. So what, do, what happens when you change the consciousness mm. of the so-called yes. next captain of industry? Mm. How would they treat black people mm. when they are in charge of selling positions of power. And did it did it change them? I mean they graduate, they go into law firms, you know, audit firms and yeah. to the another uh, redress. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think history must charge. charge. Yeah. I think we must just give it ten years. Okay. Let's, let's let's see when we're in power. Mm. Uh, and already things are showing up on our understanding, our anticipation of who's going to be next in line. Mm -hmm. We already see some few colleagues who are now entering into parliament, mm -hmm. others are in, are in management positions, others mm -hmm. are directors in certain NGOs, others are starting their businesses. But you see how mm -hmm. their consciousness is around mm -hmm. social change, yeah. making money, and all of these things. Mm -hmm. So I think history must be the judge. But here's the thing, I mean, the statue of Rhodes fell, but mm -hmm. Rhodes hasn't fallen. Yes. Rhodes is very present mm -hmm. in the university. Rhodes is very present in higher education. Mm -hmm. And in a way, when we launched the Rhodes Must Fall Scholarship, mm -hmm. was to say, uh, here's a way in which actually you can challenge the presence of Rhodes mm -hmm. in the corridors of the university. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a conversation that the Rhodes Must Fall activists the ones who have gone into different spaces, do you ever have a conversation about Rhodes and, and his presence mm. in, our, in our campuses, in our education, mm. in our being? 
No, I mean, post the, the movement, uh, mother, I mean, firstly, is that students, the court that was meeting has went to into different, mm. different thinking and different ways of, 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 of struggling. But I think when it comes to the continuous presence and legacy of Rhodes, because Rhodes is, is a representation of a, of a culture mm. rather right. than... Um, a, a person. Mm. It's it's um, it says to us that there's something you know inherently wrong about our societies whose values are still founded on the same foundation of conquest. Mm. You know, but be that as it may, we have inherited this institution. Mm. They are we're not going to do what uh, others have suggested that we must live white institutions and go and okay. invest in, 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 in black historical But what are white institutions? Yes. white institutions? These are public institutions. These are, yes, they exactly. Are this, exactly, you yeah. know, I mean, even back in the days, they were ours. They were ours. You know? We were just denied access to them. Yes, ours. they were ours. Yeah. So, the, the idea that, you know, um, they, there's a space in which people can learn or belong to and they don't belong in a certain university yeah. is a, a, a concept that I fundamentally disagree with because UCT, just like any other university, is a public university so? which bears a particular ethical responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that responsibility is to create an enabling environment that is conscious of the history of the very same institution. When I enter into the walls of Fuller, when I enter into the walls of Smart, it cannot be that the university overly glorifies that history without being cognizant of the implications of that history to those who are just coming into it. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a deliberateness of conceptually changing the idea of who's a student. You know, when race culture or university culture was created, it was only black men, only, only mm. white males who were mm. involved in the education mm. system. Up until later on, white women mm. started participating. And then of course, then it's mm. us who came in later on. Mm. But the point is, the human being subject who's conceived when people think of this problem mm. is a white man. A white man. Mm. You know? mm. So we need to decenter the white man, mm. delink him away from human activities of joy, an experience and stewardship to a culture that is cognizant that there will be a child from Bangu mm. who comes from yeah. Yeah. There will be a child from a uh, Hamas clan, mm. even though they are busy being dealt with by Corella now mm. because of the inefficiency of the Hamas mm. But there will be a child who has never experienced a computer. Mm. 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 How do we teach them? Yeah. You yeah. Know, what does teaching look like? Yeah. There will be a child who will be hungry, mm. you know, while we are learning. Mm. How do you give without mm. making feel make them feel that they are inadequate, mm. as if they are a Peter or a charity case? It is within those kinds of systems that universities need to engineer first. Two, yeah. I think even a level of curriculum, mm. um, uh, our curriculum has that uh, stopped top standard approach, you know, the teacher mm. lays, lays it down, mm. first it starts with the canonical text, you know, who are the founders of this discipline, mm. who has said mm. what in this discipline. Mm. There's no way in which you can come out of a state and not knowing the debates around this discipline. Mm. But where is the historical context that gives mm. those debates to your own lived reality? Mm. Simple. I mean, in richer studies, if you take richer studies, um, People will always speak up about religious studies as if it's something that's born there. Yeah. Um, in Europe and in times of enlightenment. Mm. But no one wants to speak about that the idea of religious studies as a discipline, it's data, it's, it's from the colonies. Mm. They have to first discover that we don't have a religion for them to have a religion. Mm. You know? Mm. When they discover that we don't have a religion, suddenly they say, oh, they have a religion. After they oppress us, mm. confine us, mm. David Chidesta puts it beautifully in systems of analysis that religious studies is born out of the other. Mm. Just like the West 
The worst to know itself in the image, like an image type of thing. When you look at yourself in the mirror, in order to see yourself, you have to see this, the mirror. Okay, well, I know this, I have this picture. Yeah. So the worst, in order to be the worst, has to discover the rest. Mm. And discover the rest by identifying that which is not mm. the worst. So we are, we have, we are ugly, we are beautiful. You know, um, we, have reason, we have no reason, we have reason. Mm. You know, we have, we are, we are not civilized, we are civilized. All of these features are important. But in our education system, you'll be told about civilization, you'll be told about religious studies, you'll be told about the industrial revolution, mm -hmm. you'll be told about the discovery uh, the, of medicine, the strike that medicine has done in healing people, you'll be told about science, mm -hmm. but you're not taught about the context in which these disciplines come in. So that we create a balance, mm -hmm. an interest for people to see where it could be, what can we take, what can we salvage from this knowledge system, what can we not salvage from. So I think I do think that there needs to be a systematic relooking mm -hmm. of teaching and the environment in which we are learning. But we can't do that in alone when the entire society in South Africa is mm -hmm. not radically transformed. Mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, even today we still struggle to get our kids to invest. In, in South Africa, the, the numbers are quite damning, mm -hmm. especially those who come from poor backgrounds who are going to enter into Ivy League universities. It's still a, a struggle that we still have to go through. So we really need to think about education as a social justice phenomenon rather than as a market conveying belt to, for jobs. Mm, and, absolutely. and once we, we, we start relooking that, people will start seeing the value of what their education is supposed to do in their communities, in the service of the nation. Yeah. One day we'll talk about that because mm -hmm. I really think we need to change uh, what the, our idea of what higher education is mm -hmm. about. What mm -hmm. education as a whole mm -hmm. is about. It's not the route to mm -hmm. a job. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, but then, of course, uh, people will say, but I need to eat, so what do you mean? But we can talk about mm -hmm. that because there's other ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's I think society needs to be transformed mm -hmm. as a whole. Um, but, but, but here's the thing, I mean, it's June. And we call it Youth Month because mm -hmm. of June 16. And of course, June 16 started being celebrated after 94, mm -hmm. when holidays were announced, June 16 became that. Um, you know, and we had roads must fall, check wheel, mm -hmm. fees must fall. Um, there isn't a recognition of that happening. And uh, my, my view is that it happened, of course, after a period where uh, many political analysts were saying uh, uh, our young people are not involved, they're not interested in politics, mm -hmm. they, they are just, you know, what's the future here? Mm -hmm. Um, and then boom, we had drugs mass for them. When it happened, just like people, adults were surprised, mm. like, ooh, mm. it's almost like they hadn't been complaining just a few months ago mm. that, mm. <laughs> that young people need to wake up. What's wrong with these young people? Mm. And when they wake up, it's like, whoa, don't wake up that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, people who say they were activists in the 70s and the 80s mm. were saying, you know, this is not activism. You must do it the way we did. Yeah, yeah. But the way, the time when the time, the time during the time when they did it, uh, the adults of that time mm -hmm. were, what is this? Yeah, yeah. You know, and somehow it's almost like we don't recognize mm -hmm. this. And I keep thinking, will many many years from now, someone say we've got to recognize uh, Rose must fall, mm -hmm. must fall. There was a movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a very powerful movement. It didn't just happen in South Africa. It, mm -hmm. it, it, okay. it, it mm. went across the world. Mm. And, and so, so I'm wondering, when, when we, we, we are in this youth month, mm. um, is there ever a time where you think we should be actually reflecting on, on um, roads must fall? I mm. mean, you know, I tried to introduce this, this at UCT, roads yeah. must fall lecture, yeah. roads must fall scholarship. Uh, uh. Um, you know, I don't know what the future is, whether it will continue, but it, it was a way to recognize the moment, mm -hmm. uh, but also to use that moment to give birth to something that actually contributes to the fall of roads, at least within, mm -hmm. within the knowledge uh, production space. I don't think there is, there is that recognition of, mm -hmm. in South Africa that um, the roads must fall, the fallest generation represents 
a, a beautiful turning point into the consciousness and even not only even political programs. I mean, people today who were not found in decolonization are now the masters of decolonization. Yeah. People's careers have blossomed. It's blossomed. <laughs> By decolonization. By decolonization. I'm telling you. True. Decolonize the finger. <laughs> yeah, towards the decolonization of the moon. <laughs> like God, you know, I'm telling you. Get your class, your two million. You get a job, you have your research you know, class. You know, you know uh, you're going to get your own things, you know. Yeah. So the point is, yeah. there is a... Um, there are people who are disingenuous around this whole recognition thing mm -hmm. because they are benefiting. Okay. And, and they have been at the forefront of erasing and not celebrating the moment as a turning moment. Mm -hmm. Why do I say it? Because they have the cultural skills and tools available to them. They have mm -hmm. access to people, they have, they have, they have writings, they have, all of these things, they are academics. Mm -hmm. Some of them are political commentators. Mm -hmm. They could have done more in the presence of students not being able to recollect their memories of what was happening, what this thing actually means, to give meat to what was happening. Sadly, none of them have done it. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, quite a few books that have given intellectual credibility to some of the themes that students were raised, you know, institutional culture, ideas around uh, pedagogy, uh, mm -hmm. ideas around, you know, uh, decentering the universal to a plural, you know, how do we take from our own vantage point and look at the world from mm -hmm. that, you know. We don't say we don't care about the world, mm -hmm. but we're saying that in order for this world to see it better, mm -hmm. to be more, mm -hmm. we must first move from yeah. this point of ours, then mm -hmm. explore the world. These are the beautiful things, even on education, uh, free education. The idea of free fee education is not a new phenomenon in third world countries. Brazil uh, is doing it, you know, from early child development to PhD. Mm -hmm. What's stopping South Africa in thinking about models of funding fee free education mm -hmm. in ways in which are sustainable? Mm -hmm. These are questions around whether we want to become a, a state that prioritizes the growth of its young people and its capabilities to participate in the global economy mm -hmm. or we are just a country that is going to produce uh, labor mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh, for everyone mm -hmm. and especially with the crisis that Africa is a young continent mm -hmm. with a young population it cannot be, be based on just raw skills mm -hmm. something else needs to happen so questions around Free, free education, mm. these are important questions mm. concerning the idea of development. Mm. None of the people are bringing up these things. They are bringing up students' burnt paintings, students' bra, where is the discourse? Mm. Talk about what students are raising. Mm. Is it making sense so far as mm. the route that the country is taking in terms of development or is it degenerating? So in that aspect, we are not going to find people celebrating and thinking about post mass mm -hmm. because it's a ticket I mean, for a promotion, whether from a, a, a career oh. of pass. While the effects of it is that those who are at the forefront of it, mm -hmm. some of them are unemployed, some of them are dealing with mental illnesses yeah. to a point where they cannot recognize themselves. Some of them are high on alcohol and, mm -hmm. and and habits that have gotten out of the spree of the moment. Other, others have a, a classroom that reads like a PhD. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you, you know, even though it should not be necessarily so. So the point that I'm trying to make first is that mm -hmm. um, the movement has worked for seven people yeah. and the movement has not worked for seven people. I do think then, the last thing, that in the future, mm -hmm. um, but South Africa has a, has a funny way, hey, South Africa is a funny country, mm -hmm. has a funny way of forgetting you while you're alive yeah. and remembering you when you die. Yes! <laughs> Why? I don't know, it's like it's. it's, it's or or yeah. crucifying you whilst you're still alive yeah, yeah. and then celebrating you, you yeah. when you die. You don't, even, you don't need to die. 
You just need to step out for four years to three years. Yes. It's like, oh, mom, it was right. Yes. How do we get him? You know, in, mom, daddy in, was in, right. Now, how do we get him? <laughs> yeah, like the brother. Prophet yeah. dies, and suddenly we celebrate exactly. and we name rules yeah. after him. Exactly. And, exactly. But then, when he was still nothing, nothing is happening. Is happening. Nothing is happening. Yeah. yeah. So we have we are we're trapped in that culture, yeah. but we are trapped in that culture because we have people who fear change. Yes. You know why they fear change? Why? Because they will not be relevant so far as they are checks. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they won't be relevant. I think that they, they, are, just scared. they are just scared that they are relevant. They won't be relevant, yeah. In the intergenerational struggle that we are in, we need everyone. Mm. You know? Absolutely. We need, we need those, yeah. you know, we need those who have traveled the road before, trying to get or coming. Yeah. But we also need those who have made experiences around these things. We also need those who have never experienced. Yes. And this is the beauty about yeah. all of us. Yeah. What are they fear that we even I mean I like, enter into certain office and I ask someone for I know can you do me that gig? I saw there's mm. a gig, a job there. Yeah. And you like, okay, no, I'm thinking about it, master, but you cannot have this job here too important. You know? You know what they say this thing? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, mm. they argue that if this one can question the experts, who are me as a line manager not to be questioned? So they are scared to be, that they are going to be questioned. Yes. Uh -huh. And because they are not doing anything, anything. new, yes. they're just, yes. why would I fix something that is not broken? Yes. But things yes. don't need to be broken. Broken to be fixed. Yes. yes. You know? yeah. That's why we have yeah. a problem with SCOM because they don't, you know, why are yes. you not? You know, um, well, that, that's why we, we people, some academics uh, are having a problem with chat GPT. I mean, you say ESCOM, it's like they've been doing what they're doing now, AI is bringing these. Yeah. So, who? What are we going to do? Exactly. But actually, we, could have, we, could have, we could have changed the way we assess a long time ago. Bad, exactly. Because the way we assess exactly. has been, it's not. What it's, the same. Be? it's the same it's old the same thing. thing. People are married to pen and paper. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I know that uh, how many times I have said, you cannot, you ban cell phones, you ban laptops mm -hmm. in the in the exam room, and then you ban watches. The next thing you're going to ban sunglasses. Yeah. Then, now, now chat GPT is here. People don't know what to do. But yeah. actually, the, the Things are changing. Yeah. You, you, you've, you've, got, you, you've got to change. You've got to change even what's not broken mm. because the world is changing. Exactly. But that's exactly what, what student activism does. It makes us relook at the things exactly. that we're doing, how we're doing them, mm. and mm. change. You and know? I'm arguing that student activism today is not allowing us to do that. Yeah. Why? It's not allowing us to think. There's not discourse. Yeah. It's Ambani, Ambani, Visi, like it's always <laughs> about. Yes. If, if our demands are not met, this university is not going to work. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Take us through. Where, where are the ideas? Yeah, like, yes. convi like convince, this, us. convince me why should I leave my room and start always thinking about your voice. If, if that man can speak, I could yes. do anything. Could do anything, yes. Yeah, because you know you're putting down Content. ideas yes. on why it is necessary for us to do things. We don't partake in the struggle because it's fashionable to do so. Yeah. We partake in this struggle precisely because we know from our contribution the next generation is going to pick up the fight. Yeah. They must not find a foundation that is weak. Mm. But who must teach these young people? I mean, mm. you have the benefits mm. of TAC mm. and equal education. Mm. I mean, think about the SRC, UCT SRC this mm. year. Where did they get the benefits? They've never, they come from areas where those movements are mm. there, or mm. those NGOs are not mm. there. Mm. You are here, they come here. There isn't, there are no um, mastete mm. or whatever yeah. meetings at night, or, mm. you know, how will they know? Yeah, no. All they know is to be head girl and head boy, so they come and do the same. Yeah, but you see, mother, it, it's, it's, it's a question of arrogance to think that you enter into some place or a, a position and think that you're the only one who has done it. Yeah. You know, it's a historical to do so. I mean, yeah. we used to say that when we we're entering in student activism that we are working on the shoulders of giants. Yes. You know? Yes. We had Abu Rabapina Mahape, yes. Abu Lundusukutu, Abu yes. Nalitima Ponopono, you mm. had Abu 
uh, yes. you know, people who have been doing this thing. Mm. And I didn't know, I didn't know to be ANC to know that they are yes. doing this thing. Yeah. I used to attend their, their sessions. But they, they organized the sessions. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm saying now you yeah. are the generation that should be organizing yeah, the sessions. Yes, yes. No, I agree. I agree. But I'm saying that there's there's a lot of work that is out there. You know, one of the things that I was I was I was, I was speaking to uh, with these activists, mm. I was shocked that I mean, people don't have have not read even the demands that are publicly out there. Mm. Back in the university mm. from 2015, what what is it that the university has in principle that trade with mm. us? Mm. Mm. No one knows. No one knows that we used to, we used to have, a, have a space as a movement that the university gave to us. Mm. No one knows that the university at some point once accepted that it's racist, mm. uh, it wants to change its colonial ways. Mm. No, in paper, mm. you know, mm. no one knows on uh, no fee increment. We, we quoted when you write some things. Yeah. <laughs> when we did. Yeah. <laughs> but so, of course people would deny it, but yeah. 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 Uh, so, um, the, the, these are the mm. tangible things that just to have an institutional memory mm. about what you are leading and mm. what you are doing. I think it's it's in Malcolm X's movie where this child comes into him and says, "I want to join the Nation of Islam." Mm. Malcolm X asks, "Why? What, why you want to join uh, the Nation? Of Islam? Don't join things that you don't know." Don't know. Mm. It's it's a clear. Mm. Why are you joining? Next day, we are to pass the Basitima. Now we are You know, like yeah. it's just. Yeah. A question of consciousness yeah. but on the other side i do think that more work has to, needs to be done uh, in terms of bringing back the conversations mm. and we have failed um as a generation that is still around precisely because you are always doing the same thing mm. over and over again you know how many people bet nothing in campus I do. Mm. is he still around <laughs> mm. it's a professional <laughs> Oh, you. Okay, I'm seven days. You have to pay. You put a door in with all those kinds of things, yes, you know. Yes. Or you get um, you get our friends who have graduated when they are in, in Cape Town. Mm. China, let's let's meet in Bangalore, uh -huh. you know. But uh, in China, I'm still a student. You know, yeah. I can't afford Bangalore. Yeah. Let's meet somewhere in Bangladesh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and and someone said, but people don't want to see you because yes. you. you if they are, they feel like you are still stuck, ah. you know, in, in 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 one place. Even though, in my defense, mm. I mean, I rather be stuck than to be bored in a nine to five mm. with people who can't wake up and say they have been drinking with them. About you know, when, when we meet them in these clubs, yes. in the yes. club, they take our books literally. Wow. They give it to me. Bro, you are no longer reading. Yes. <laughs> so what are you doing? We were reading together yeah. in university, yeah. we used to go to jazz things, we used yeah. to do all those cultural things. Yeah. Now, you just are happy that payday is coming, My you send money to home, and you go and shout at your music so loud so that people can hear your frustrations of paying a bond or a debt. That's all. Yeah. So the only, the only reason why you are educated, you want to tell me, is because you want to show off that you have a car, that you, have, you can buy Hennessy, mm -hmm. or you can afford to get that sister that you long wanted, but because you were poor, you didn't have money now, you thought oh, it's the time to address the ecosystems of the past. Ah, oh, Omar, what's the point of spending? You know the state has spent over a million on my education. Yeah. Imagine yeah. such waste of resources and people want to just, you know, outshine other people because they never went to school. And you find them, you find most helpful things that they see. I can speak to someone who has never went to his school. Wow. You know? Wow. What's the point of sending you to yeah. school if yeah. you are going to address people mm. in this way? Education is supposed to mm. be your identification with the masses. Mm. You're supposed to show the light that people will find you with. You, mm. Know? Mm. you don't need to do much. Yeah. You just need to say, I think we should do things different. Mm. Someone will say, but how different? No, let's think together. Mm. That's the job, to speak out. Yeah. So that other people can find courage to speak with you. Mm -hmm. Not to think that you are God ordained or exceptional yeah. by being given this certificate. I, I want that to be a, a focus of our next conversation. Mm -hmm. Because um, we've gone too long, I want mm -hmm. us to close, but I, I want us to talk in future about 
whether some people see student activism as careerism, it's gonna mm. take you somewhere. Mm. So, you know, you're gonna get into uh, corporate, you earn money, you live large, you forget about mm. everything else that you thought about at university. Or you're gonna get into politics, mm. parliament, provincial, legislature, and so on. Um, because, you know, people are, social justice activists mm -hmm. on campus and then when they complete their law degrees they go into the big law firm and they forget about social justice mm -hmm. but they could do social justice yes, actually they but they choose not to mm -hmm. and and i think we need to have a conversation about that mm -hmm. but but i think it's a i mean I, I thank you so much for the for the conversation that we've had today but perhaps in closing it's not like you're just sitting i mean you've you've graduated yeah. You've graduated and, and you're busy with your masters, and it was very interesting. I think when you graduated for the on, for with your honors degree, the workers came and they took off their clothes yeah. and they put them on the ground. It was, I mean, you didn't ask. You just you just got off. Mm -hmm. uh, someone had given you a lift. You got yeah. off the car. Yeah. Yes, and then people suddenly took off their clothes, and I mean, I've got goosebumps even thinking about yeah. that. What was what why why do people feel that way? workers in particular these are gardeners cleaners who came mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they felt that to show their respect and the how happy they were for you yeah well even to me it was even today still an overwhelming feeling yeah. you know, when i think about it but i think my angela sums it so nicely that people may forget what you have said yeah. and may forget what you've done but they can never forget how you made them feel for the first time, I felt alive. I felt that even if tomorrow people will say, Master, what you've done, mm. God is taking you, I'll, I'll be proud. Mm. Personally, I'll be proud. Mm. Because I feel that I've stepped up on what makes me feel like a human being. You know, to say that we all deserve a just and good for society. Mm. Not it's not in in some of us, it's in mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't know if you know the the poem our our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate, you know, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measures. At the end of that uh, poem, in the, the the author has something similar to it's not our light that most frightens us, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's playing it's playing insecure so that we don't um, make other people feel small as well, you know, our presence. Mm -hmm. And once we allow that moment of not feeling small for others, mm -hmm. our presence in themselves, they liberate others. Mm -hmm. So I felt at UCT, particularly with the workers, because workers are the most consistent thing mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. um, whether from Chinese to securities, mm -hmm. and being in a university where everyone thinks of themselves as coming from yeah. rich or deserving smart. to be a smart mm -hmm. the top of the top yeah. sometimes the, the the their humanity is mm -hmm. sort of gets skewed in yeah. disrespecting mm -hmm. and and for me i mean a, in, in in my part i never really you know it one plate and i used to get my own plate and yes. still live with the plane to go to my <laughs> room. Precisely of how workers yes. who, who used to understand and motherly and this yeah. and the other people don't call me by my name, you know, mm. I'm not called Max and stuff, I'm called Rasta. Mm. I'm called Mr. Coffee Man because I used to like him and coffee. Yes. To a point where when I enter into a dining hall yeah. and they don't see me with coffee, already someone is like oh. busy saying there's coffee man. Yes. So it felt like it, it, it was feminine mm -hmm. that um, if we if we don't stand up at this generation, mm -hmm. no one will stand up, you know. Mm -hmm. And you see, there's been um, different periods of people standing up, whether it's white kids in Achima Fletcher's moment, mm -hmm. or the idea of censoring apartheid and, and the university. Mm -hmm. Every different generation has been having, having its own mm -hmm unique way of standing up mm. and you know we had to stand up with an impact mm. that would live longer and that impact is always 
success. We help people to be higher economically. Mm. Mm. That is not the end of it all, but it's a start yeah. to show that collective action does build the results mm. that are positive. Mm. And if, as a country, we can adopt collective action to mm. fix our problems, mm. we might be in a better situation mm. to create a just and ethical society. Mm. And just and ethical in the sense that it's unfair to have people who have so many things while their majority have nothing. Mm. Ethical, mm. how do you justify eating a bread on a, on a loan while you could still share it? Mm. So, UCT for me, particularly the workers, it was that kind of relationship. Mm. To say, this university, as we said earlier, was a public university. Mm. Two, from being a public university, it is the number one university in the continent. Mm. Now, if it's the number one university in the country, it must be the one who sets an example on how workers, students, and even at black academics are treated in the mm. African continent. It cannot be that one, the first one to exploit, mm. you know, mm. what kind of an leading research. Mm. Clearly, we're not researching those research, mm. you know. I mean, even the feeding scheme, the research around feeding scheme in South Africa is pretty much given light to the research of universities. Mm. So if we cannot turn the, the eye against the university itself mm. to see how you know, it could also respond in treating its own community um, in a just way, I think we would be much better. I mean, yeah. Baldwin says it nicely that the, co uh, the paradox of education is precisely this. As soon as one begins to be educated, they begin to examine the, the, the society in which they are educated. Mm. We had to examine UCT because it's the one who bestows itself on being a teacher. Mm. You know, teacher don't teach me nonsense, uh, fellow quote, yeah. is in reverse what we did to university. Yeah. What is it that we're teaching? Are you modeling these examples yeah. within the staff? Mm. It's like a great unit that yes. pays people less when yeah. it's speaking about wages. Yeah, yeah. that's very powerful actually, yes. The things that you were getting as a social science student, a humanities student, mm -hmm. you were not seeing them exemplified on campus. Exactly. You had to speak about radical things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Why? Thank you so much for, for making this time. Mm -hmm. We are definitely going to connect again because mm -hmm. there's lots to talk about. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad we had this this time. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us as well. Uh, it's been great. Remember to be yourself, be authentic. That's the only way you can do you, see it.